you're changing your center of mass and you're adjusting for <coughs> undulations in the ground. If it's very slippery, you have to give a little bit and let the tire go, and then when it hooks back up, you have to be able to set your weight back on it and adjust. Core musculature will have an effect on your ability to hold a corner, all right? So I have Adam doing a single leg squat right here, and what I want you to see is when he dips down, his center of mass, like, he's very vertical. Okay? His, his body moves directly down, but you actually see his knee dive in pretty huge right here. So he's carrying his center of mass perfectly down, and he's adjusting with his leg to, he basically has to go somewhere, so he lets his knee dive in. Show it again. Center of mass stays perfectly over his foot the whole way up and down, leg adjusts. You watch Ryan do it, right before we even start, he's already kind of leaned over the side, and you see as he dips down, his he's adjusting with his upper body versus actually like doing it through his leg or through his center of his mass. The center of his mass is moving differently than on Adam right there. So they're carrying themselves with different musculature and they're holding themselves differently. Now you watch Adam hop and it might even be more exaggerated, okay? He hops and he can he can adjust pretty quickly and he can he can hold his center of mass over a very small point on his foot pretty easily. You watch Ryan do it, he's already leaned over, he's he's and then he, he feels pretty awkward, and he, he has a hard time kind of holding his center of mass over a small point. What is cornering? You're on a tiny little patch of ground as you're cornering, and you're having to like constantly fine-tune your center of mass over that spot and hold traction, right? This, this will come into play when you like get into gnarly courses, okay? Jumping, I don't know, we see a whole lot here. You'll just maybe see like a little bit of ease with which they do it. Um, Adam can jump up and down on stuff pretty easily. Ryan maybe might look a little bit more uh, tax doing it on the way back down. He kind of falls forward. His, his strength lies down here in his legs. It's not actually coming from the center of his body up here, which is s different than Adam. Now, lateral jumping, this is really just kind of testing his ability to catch his center of mass as he goes from side to side, and you just, there's not a whole lot to see on this one other than maybe kind of how much he has to move his arms around to hold his center of mass. Now, he's using his arms to kind of adjust the center of mass over his foot, and that's how he's balancing himself, because he's got so much weight in his arms compared to the rest of his body, or the rest of his core, I guess you should say. Now, when we look at somebody on the bike, you'll see huge differences, differences in how people posture themselves on the bike. And you can theorize that, that comes from the relative flexibilities from parts of your body. You know, if you're, if you're very flexible in one spot, that place is going to move first compared to one that's not. As well as dominant musculature will kind of hold you in a certain way, or it'll, it'll affect your, mo your motor. Um, we look at Adam from the side. He rides on a road bike very erect. Like, his, his chest is very exposed to the wind. He's... He sits up extremely high, and he, only, he doesn't really feel comfortable when you force him to come down, because he's got, he's actually got quite a bit of passive muscle tension in his low back. It's not a bad thing, it's just strong and it's tense. He's really flexible in his hamstrings, and his, his, his glutes, remember, have that passive tension in them that we saw earlier when he could only go to 90 degrees. So if he leans forward a little, uh, here, I'll show him from the rear for a minute. When you watch him pedaling from the rear, I want you just to look at kind of the vertical nature of how his legs pedal. Uh, you know, his hip, his knee, and his ankle are all in line. His toes are slightly out in a little bit of external rotation. You know, about 15 degrees of external rotation is really like an anatomical position for your foot to rest. He's, he's riding close to that right now. Do you look at him, if you force him to come down like into an aero position like a roadie would ride, he, he runs into a lot of tension in this area of his body, winding up, and it feels, it just feels odd, likely. And so, he would, as a road biker, he hasn't really had a very lucrative career as a road biker, um, where this would really come into play. You, know, you really expose yourself to wind, which is a huge component of road racing, if you have this muscle tension characteristics of your lower back. We look at Ryan from the side, he, well, there's a whole lot to see here, but 
he's, he's not going very hard. There's not much resistance, so you can see him rocking around a bit. But when he actually starts putting out huge amounts of loads, he doesn't rock a lot. Um, he does tend to stay closer to kind of end range flexion on the bike, whereas Adam, you can see, has a much more like neutral spine here. Your spine operates best when it's kind of close to a normal anatomical position. When you start putting it in, in loaded positions or end range flexion positions, that's where you're at risk to hurt yourself. So if he's flexed extremely on the bike and he's putting out ridiculous amounts of walk through his legs, that's, that's pretty stressful on this area of your body. Remember I said he has really flexible hips right here. He has huge amounts of load coming through his legs. It's going to be kind of driven into his into his low spine. Whereas Adam's back, it's it's so tense with thick musculature that it's it's not really taken to an extreme position. Anyway, Ryan had, and Ryan, unlike Adam, feels really comfortable like, in the drops because his hip itself is actually pretty flexible. His hamstring is not getting elongated enough to actually limit him and want to kind of pull him back up on the bike. We look at Ryan from the rear, and this is where you get really weird. Now, if you look at like how his leg lines up, his knee is extremely close to the top tube right here, and you see kind of an angle between his knee and his hip. And then you see his, his heels are actually kind of canted out, so his toes are in, which is not, that's not how he looks when he's just standing there or when he's resting laying on his back. His legs look relatively uh, relatively normal as far as their alignment. But on the bike, you see him heel out, toe in, knee in. That's indicative of somebody who's extremely strong and dominant through medial hamstring structures. If these are extremely dominant, they'll kind of alter the position of your leg. And that's, when we look at the movement of his knee, like, vertically, it's actually a pretty vertical plane. And we'll see that with retooled data later. That he doesn't have this big sweeping movement of his knee. It's actually pretty stable, but it's just in kind of a different position than you might expect. Um, so Bart next is going to look really close using retool data at how these guys look on the bike to kind of theorize a little bit more. 